I have one more question. Uh, why do you have so many languages? Why can't you have just one universal language? Or is it necessary to have so many languages? So this question's um, answer is slightly tricky. That even I, I don't think even I know the right answer for this question. But if I were to ask you the same question, why do you have so many languages in the world? That people speak, right? You have look at a country like India. We have so many languages, and let alone the dialects, hundreds of them, right? So the reason is some people find solace and comfort in getting a few tasks done using a particular type of programming language and it develops with time. Then they realize, okay, this kind of a programming language is used for, let's say for scientific purposes only. It is not helping us in uh, building any business applications. And then they switch to, uh, they customize the uh, programming language and say, okay, so this we will use for business oriented applications. For example, Pascal was a general purpose programming language. Fortran, I'm talking about um, 30, 40 years ago. Fortran is, is, it stands for formula translator. Okay, that was mainly used for scientific reasons. And then came COBOL. COBOL was used for uh, common business oriented language. That's what it stands for. It was used for business oriented applications, right? And then they thought, okay, fine, we need something really robust and nice. And they came out with C. And then they realized in C there was a lot of problems when a programmer was programming. Uh, it was not easy on his mind. So they created this notion of objects and that was the birth of uh, object-oriented programming. Right? There is very good difference between C and C++. C++ helps a person program better by keeping his mind um, um, free from any sort of ambiguity and confusions when he is coding. And then, came Pask, uh, and then came Python because Python was known to be sort of, uh, they kept in mind the psychology of the programmer. C to C++ was a big leap. And then Python was like, everyone should program. How do we go about doing that? And then since it's open source, a lot of people contributed to it. And today it stands really tall as a fantastic programming language. So it is all um, evolution of uh, man's thinking uh, based on uh, the need for something. That's a good question, by the way. Yeah, I was rightly thinking, like, as you said, it has evolved through years. That's what I can generalize from what we have told now. So, do you think it will further evolve? Will we further move ahead or? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> again, a very interesting question. Again, I'm not so sure whether I know the answer. Of course, yes. I personally believe that the next generation will. One thing is for sure. I've been observing that programming is getting easier and easier with time. Firstly, because of the available online resources. And secondly, because of the inherent ease with which you can code with the kind of tools and techniques that are available today. For example, I might sound a little technical, don't mind. There's something called integrated development environments, IDEs, where it makes your life really simple to write a piece of code. It's like you're talking in some language. If you make a mistake, you have a earphone, small earphone, where you hear, you made a mistake here, correct it. Or you are typing something and you make a spelling mistake and your word processor says, this is the right spelling, not just that, it corrects it automatically. Or says, there's a possible grammar error here. I'm just giving you analogies, right? Even in programming, there are such beautiful, uh, what is called IDEs, which helps you program really, really better. So the future of programming would be, Anyone can program, um, any amount of it, and with a whole lot of confidence and um, the, the, the skill set required for one to program back in 80s is very different from what it is today. In fact, there are there is a software called Scratch, a very popular one, which I'm going to teach you people to begin with. You will see that it's actually fun to program. It's a whole lot of fun to program. In fact, you can develop um, games of your choice by using a um, tool called Scratch. We'll see more of it.